John tomorrow. Yesterday we had a confirmation mass for about 54 of our youth who received the fullness of the Holy Spirit in that beautiful sacrament. And tomorrow at 6 p.m., Cardinal Dinardo will be here to confer the sacrament of a confirmation on another set of 55 or so of our youth uh, who will also receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. This is a beautiful sacrament in the church, a sacrament that reminds us that we are all disciples or we are called to be disciples of Jesus, to walk with Jesus, to follow his ways and to do his will. It's always beautiful to see so many receiving sacraments uh, in the church. We have uh, instances of baptisms of infants and of baptism of adults. And um, during this Easter vigil, we will also celebrate the sacrament of initiation for some of our uh, members who have been working with us and who are ready to become full Catholics or who are ready to be baptized into the faith. So these are beautiful things and signs of uh, the growth of the church. But it's also uh, during these big events, it also brings to question about um, uh, what we or how we are trying uh, to sustain the faith in the heart and the lives of many who do come to receive it. It's a beautiful thing to see about 55, 54 yesterday, 55 tomorrow of our youth receiving the sacraments. And someone was, was asking me um, that um, are all these, uh, are they all parishioners? You know, uh, because I really don't see many of them in church. You know, so, uh, but we can give excuse of the, of the pandemic at this time to say, oh, the pandemic doesn't allow a lot of people to come to church. But in reality, it is a question to ask about why uh, we see people coming to church for these sacraments and after that, they don't seem to, to do anything with it anymore. And I kind of compare it with, um, with the gift. In fact, the, the, the presider at the mass yesterday, uh, Father Italo uh, del Oro, uh, who celebrated, who was delegated by the bishop to celebrate the sacrament for our youth, um, mentioned the gift that is given during these sacraments. It is a gift given. And uh, Father Pineda mentioned that too. Well, that was the theme of his, um, of his, of his mission uh, this year. It says, if only you know the gifts of God. So these sacraments are gifts that are given, uh, but how do we use them? You know, that is a question we need to ask. And sometimes our youth or other people who receive these sacraments receive it and they just want to protect the gifts. You know, they is wrapped in a beautiful, beautiful design and uh, with the ribbons all around it, and they just, they, they, it's so good to see, and they just keep it like that in a shelf somewhere in their home, maybe somewhere in their heart, but they really don't open up the gifts to begin to see what is in there and to begin to use them one after the other. That is the sadness of, our, uh, of uh, the experience that many of us have of the faith which is really not something good for us to, to have. These gifts are given to be opened, to be used, you know, to be taken out one by one. It's like having an array of weapons in your, in, your, in, your, in your arsenal, and when it's time for war, you bring them out one by one and use them. If you don't bring them out to use them, you're not going to win the war. You may have all the tools, but if you don't use them, they are really meaningless. So the gift of the sacraments that we receive, they are meant to be gifts that are given, received, and used to the glory of God. So when we begin to use these gifts, of course, uh, it begins to, sh to show in our lives, and somehow we are able to experience the, 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 the fire of love that the Holy Spirit really gives in these sacraments that we receive. So we congratulate our, our youth who received these sacraments uh, yesterday and those who will receive tomorrow. And also we extend that congratulation to our adults and children who will be initiated into the church at, at Easter. 
You know, it's, the days are coming very fast. Some of these children and adults uh, got someone, had someone who shared, with, who told them about Jesus, who shared with faith with them. And in our gospel text today, we read about um, some uh, people who came from, for the festival, for the feast, or the Passover feast uh, in, uh, in Jerusalem. And they came to, to ask about Jesus. They asked Philip, so we would like to see Jesus. And Jesus, um, I mean, Philip uh, turned to Andrew and said, they want to see Jesus. And then, of course, Andrew and now Philip, both of them now went to, to Jesus to tell him, these Greeks want to see you. But these Greeks are not, uh, they're actually Jews who were in diaspora, Jews who were living in territories outside the Jewish land at this time, because during the Passover feast, all Jews from all over the world, they come together, uh, they try to go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. So some of these who were outside the walls, uh, they were in diaspora, must have heard something about Jesus. And so part of their intention as they left for, for Jerusalem was to find this man and talk to him and see him. And so they, they, they fulfilled that mission. They said to, to Philip, one of, his, one of the disciples of Jesus, we want to see Jesus. And, and Philip turned to his, to, to his fellow disciple, Andrew. And Andrew, both, both of them now went to Jesus. We were not really told precisely what Jesus shared with these uh, uh, Greeks, uh, what he told them. But he seemed to continue his walk. And, I, and uh, it appears he may have told them also something about what followed from here. The fact that um, the Son of Man came into the world as a grain of wheat to die so that others can live, so that um, uh, the life of faith can be sown, so that the new covenant that uh, Jeremiah talked about in our first reading today will become a reality in the life of people. So that um, the, the covenants that have come before, of course, they were all uh, pointing to Jesus. And Jesus, who is the new uh, and the fulfillment of the new covenant, of all these old covenants uh, now fulfilled in him, uh, brings about that uh, victory that is won for us. And this is the hour that Jesus talked about in the gospel text today. Uh, it, St. John, the, 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 um, the apostle, who is also the evangelist uh, in this gospel, uh, in his gospel actually made reference to the hour. I don't know if any other gospel really did that. But 12 times or so, the hour came, uh, was, uh, came about in the gospel of St. John. It, we, the first time we heard those words were uh, at Cana in Galilee uh, when Jesus um, was, uh, was invited to a wedding and his, and his mother said to him, uh, these people are lacking wine. The wine has finished. They need more. Uh, help them. And Jesus said to, turned to her and said, what, what does this concern? Uh, what, is, what concern of this is for you and I? You know, my hour has not yet come. And then, of course, he will go ahead and perform the miracle for, for turning the water into wine for them. So that certainly points to the fact that that is not the hour he was referring to. The hour that he referred to uh, later on, uh, there were times when Jesus was performing miracles on Sabbath days and other days, and the Jews were trying to kill him. You know, they want to get him, but he will escape we find a way to escape. Again, St. John will say, because his hour had not yet come. So what is this hour that Jesus talked about? Obviously, he mentioned it himself in the text of today. It is that hour when he will be glorified. And what kind of glory was he talking about? It was the glory of his crucifixion and death on the cross. The glory of his coming to shed his blood for us, for each of us to have life and have it abundantly. That is the hour that he meant. So in the next two weeks or so, in the next few days, we will enter this hour with Jesus, the hour of his passion, the hour of his crucifixion, 
He died on the cross for us, the cross that became um, his, uh, his, uh, his, 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 his place of victory for us, so that uh, even though some didn't recognize him as a king, truly he was a king, but the cross uh, was his throne, as it were, the throne where he wore the crown of thorns, which of course is a crown of victory for him. And uh, he is inviting all of us to come and walk with him in this, uh, in this journey, the journey that involves a little bit of pain, a little bit of suffering, of, uh, of shedding our own blood uh, for, for, for salvation. And he mentioned it very clear today that unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. So we see so many fruits being produced by Christ, by the death and his victory on the cross of Calvary, that 2,000 years later, so many of us are coming to know him, are coming to walk with him and to live in his presence. But we have to keep doing that. Uh, our life has to keep showing that we truly believe in this one who rose again from the dead for us. And we have to also help others to recognize this so that when people come to us as they came to Philip and Andrew today, we want to see Jesus. What answer do we give to them? How do we lead them to Jesus? How do we help them to recognize his presence in their own lives? How do we help them to be able to, to see even in their pain and maybe in their sufferings the hand of God that is walking through them and in them in those moments? So the work of God is given to us today. We have a task, a responsibility uh, to, to live out our Christian life and not to be afraid of what is to come. And of course, it wasn't a very easy and rosy path for Jesus. Even though this was the hour that he came for, we heard him today almost asking and praying that maybe uh, this, uh, uh, this cup should pass over him as it were. I am troubled now, he says. What, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. So when he was getting very close to that moment of, this, of the main reason why he came to this world, Jesus was troubled. Maybe we can use other words. Maybe he was, um, he was getting cold feet, maybe, or maybe he was getting doubtful, maybe afraid, or whatever term we want to use. Those human terms, of course, expresses something, a little bit of, um, of what Jesus felt, but that wasn't the complete one because at the end of the day, he submitted to the will of the Father. St. John did not give us the account of the Gethsemane prayer of Jesus. This was Gethsemane, uh, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane uh, for, for, uh, for, for St. John. This hour of prayer, praying to God, this hour, if it's possible, uh, save me from this hour, Lord. And then, of course, we were told that the angels and uh, God himself spoke to him, you know, to reassure him that um, what he's doing is on the right path. He shouldn't be afraid. He should go head on because the God of, the God of love is with him. So an angel has spoken to him. The voice from heaven says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. You know, that kind of, uh, that gave him that sense of, uh, of conviction and of course of desire to continue on that path. This is a, this is a man, this is one God who, who has that relationship with the, with the second person, I mean with the, with the God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit as the second person of the Trinity. And so he's inviting us to have that same uh, relationship because um, when we have a deep relationship with God, even when we experience pain and, uh, and some difficult moments, and when we get afraid of moving forward in the right direction and the right step, we may know that this is the right thing to do, but we are scared, we are afraid, we don't want to go forward. We are wondering what others will say, and if there will be support from anyone. 
The one we need to look up to, therefore, is God himself, the source of our strength, the, the source of our life, and the source of our joy. And he will reassure us that we are not moving in vain. So today we pray that we may have that uh, uh, relationship with God and be close to Jesus who came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. Let us spend of ourselves during this time. We have a few more days to the end of Lent. So if there are good works that we are yet to do and we had taught, we'll be able to do during this Lent where we still have time to do it. So let's begin today. If we are taught about uh, maybe fasting and praying more and we are yet to do any of those, well, let us begin today again. There is no time that is too late to return to the Savior. No time that is too late to begin to walk with Jesus on this uh, journey of glory that he underwent. And we pray that we will unite ourselves with his hour during this uh, period so that the glory that he received will also be ours and will be able to share in this glory of his resurrection. So may God strengthen us today and help us to live a life that is worthy of him. Amen. Amen. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father, Father and the Son, Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, holy Catholic, Catholic, and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are holy people made in God's image and likeness. Let us show forth God's love and care by praying for all who are in need. For the church, may we enter the coming holy days with renewed and steadfast hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, may God's covenant of love be known to people of every language, culture, race, and way of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increased desire to place our lives at the service of others, may we be given the grace to learn obedience through our suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are troubled by disease and addiction, may they be cleansed in body, 
mind and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those newly confirmed, and will be confirmed on Monday, that they may, be, they may be a witness to Christ by their way of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And all those preparing for baptism may experience the joyful welcome of the Christian community this Easter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they experience the healing presence of Christ through the hands of their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joe Waters and Roy Gutierrez, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us the joy of your salvation, Lord. Sustain a willing spirit within us. Hear our humble prayer and lead us closer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our offerings. Thank you for your generosity. The hymn for the preparation of the gifts is Only This I Want. to know the Lord and to bear his cross so to wear the crown he wore all but this is lost worthless refuse to me for to gain the Lord is to gain all I need. Only this I want, but to know the Lord and to bear his cross. So to wear the crown he wore, I will run the race, I will fight the good fight, so to win the prize of the kingdom. But to know the Lord and to bear his cross, so to wear the crown he wore. Let your heart be glad, always glad in the Lord. So to shine like stars in the darkness of the night. Only this I want, but to know the Lord and to bear his so to wear the, the crown he wore. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Of the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We leave them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denier should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelli et Terra Gloria Tua, Hosanna in You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts who are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance which you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary Magdalene and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop George, our assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us bow to each other as a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is The Love of the Lord. All that I counted as gain. Now I consider as loss, empty and worthless to me, in the light of the love of the Lord, riches and honors will fade, earthly delight disappear fade like the grass of the field in the light of the love of the Lord what more could bring us hope than to know the power of his life what more could bring us peace than to share in his suffering and death? What more could be our final wish than to live in the love of the Silver and gold have I none, no land to count as my home, yet wealth beyond measure I own, in the light of the love of the Lord. Faith the wealth I possess 
finding its source in my God. Faith in the promise of Christ is my life and my love of the Lord. What more could bring us hope than to know the power of this life? What more could bring us peace than to share in his suffering and death? What more could be our final wish than to live in the love of the is broken, wine that is poured, love is the sign of our Lord. You who have touched us and graced us with love, make us your people of goodness and love. Lord, you can open hearts that are stone, live in our flesh and our bone. Lead us to wonder, mystery and grace, one in your loving embrace. Let our hearts burn with the fire of your love. Open our eyes to the glory of God. Lord, you can open hearts that are stone, live in our flesh and our bones. Lead us to wonder, mystery and grace, one in your loving embrace.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may be always, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just uh, one or two reminders here. Um, we have um, blood drive today in the FLC. So after this mass, if you'd like to donate blood, uh, please go to the Family Life Center. Uh, we need blood of all types so to save more lives. So please, if you can, please uh, do that today. The St. Mary Magdalene Catholic School is having raffle tickets on sale for their spring uh, fundraiser. So please support them as you leave the church today. They are outside selling those tickets. And the uh, Holy Week is almost here. Check the bulletin for the different um, uh, services, confessions, adoration times, all in the bulletin. And some of them are up on the screen at this time. But I'd like to add that uh, during Holy Week, uh, we will not have the regular times for confessions. Uh, there will be no confession on Tuesday or Thursday or Saturday of Holy Week. Rather, we have confessions on Wednesday, Wednesday of Holy Week in the evening at 6 p.m., and then on Good Friday in the morning at 9 a.m., so please check that out. We also have um, uh, Stations of the Cross on Good Friday at 2 p.m. in English, followed by the Good Friday Passion of Jesus and uh, Veneration of the Cross, and then 6 p.m. in Spanish, followed by the Spanish um, Adoration and also the Veneration of the Cross and the Passion. So please take note of those uh, times. Once again, I want to congratulate our candidates who received their confirmation yesterday and those who are gearing up for, for tomorrow. We pray the Holy Spirit will continue to guide and support them. And a special thanks to all our volunteers and all the, all the confirmation team members who assisted in preparing this uh, youth for, for the confirmation, really, and also in celebrating the event yesterday and the one we celebrate tomorrow. Thank you so much for your, for your service to the community in caring for our young ones. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Bless, O oh Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join in singing our dismissal hymn, Jerusalem my destiny. I have fixed my eyes on your hills, Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me. I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. the Spirit lesser gods have courted me with lies. Here among you I have found the truth which bids
bids me rise. I have fixed my eyes on your hills. Jerusalem, my destiny, though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one. Vertigo.